Hello, everybody. Welcome. We're going into the book, Abandonment to Divine Providence, but I'm up here by the ocean. I just was down there walking, but I came back up. And so I think I'm going to show us this view. Look, they're making my house right now. I'm kidding. Who knows? You never know what's going to happen. Here, here's the sun. Oh, so just feel the ocean. I might have the camera turned out for us so we get this view. But I didn't bring my chair to sit out. I mean, I have a blanket I can sit out there, but some guy's doing the, the buzzing right now. So um, the grass. So we're here for a second and um, we'll see when I turn back around. Um, well, let's start back where we are instead of my hiking trail. We're down here by the ocean. All right. So welcome. This is by Jean-Pierre de Cassade. He was, um, oh, no wonder. I got the intuition to put my headphones in the other day. And I was like, I don't need those. And it was like two days ago for, for now, because then I can reach my camera out there and... I would have had my mic that would have been really great um but i'll see what the view is for you if i just flip this around um so we're on chapter six of i think it's book three holy abandonment this is translated from the french from the 1500s i think So welcome. You can just use this time to just be present with God. Um, I welcome people of all faiths. This man was, Jean-Pierre de Cassade was, um, a, I think, a Jesuit m m priest. And he was a spiritual director to nuns. But don't let that hold you back in any way if you have any kind of ego barriers to this like these are people that uh, are just surrendered to christ and surrendered to god surrendered to the this higher will god is divine love god is love and christ walked in that highest consciousness and so all all of my videos i feel like bob marley right now i was just talking about him with my friend my friend met me down here um he had i saw this reel and he was like all of my songs are about coming to this higher spiritual reality, pretty much. And he became Christian in the last six months of his life. He became baptized Orthodox, Ethiopian Orthodox, but they don't like publicizing that because it says it's not good for um, what, he, what they used him to promote before. Anyway, I'll just leave it. I got to get some air in here, so we'll see. Uh, okay, chapter six, chapter VI. The soul abandoned to the will of God, so far from resisting her enemies, finds in them useful auxiliaries. I'm trying to think uh, real quick of a place that we can go where you can see the ocean and... Let's just be present with where we are. Uh, I get this awesome view though. I really, I always want to share it. Let me see. Let me look what you're seeing. kind of just like a skyline like that but so it's not very changing 
All right, I'll go like this for a second. The soul abandoned to the will of God, so far from resisting her enemies. Oh, I do this sometimes to show that we're starting. If people want to fast forward. But I also do that if there's people coming because it's not dark. It's not, so I don't want them in the video if they don't want to be in it. Okay, you get this. The soul abandoned to the will of God, so far from resisting her enemies, finds them useful ex auxiliaries. Wow. Okay. I, I, it says, I fear my own action and that of my friends more than I do my enemies. There is no prudence equal to that of offering no resistance to one's enemies, but that of simple abandonment to the will of God. Nothing which so fully ensures our peace. It is rowing with the tide, sailing with the wind, which swiftly brings us into port. There's nothing better than simplicity with which to meet the prudence of this world. It's it skillfully, though unconsciously, evades its snares without even thinking of them. You don't have to think of them. Maybe we'll get to hear the ocean in the background. Dealing with a simple soul is, in a measure, dealing with God. Who can cope with the Almighty, whose ways are inscrutable? God espouses the cause of the simple soul. She has no need to study the intrigues of her enemies, to meet their activity with equal alertness, watching all their movements. Oh, this is so for me right now. I hope it is for you. God, be with all of us that have been having to face our quote enemies help us to know what to do and and learn from this today we pray you speak through me if if I, I say anything else God and I just pray you speak through this book for everyone here watching in the replay of this feed their souls feed their minds feed their hearts help us to abandon to you completely I pray in Jesus name amen all right so we don't have to be watching all their movements her spouse, with a capital S, relieves her of all of this. She confides all to him and then rests on his breast in peace and security. And, and I can show you my journal. Like, so you believe this. Look, look, I'll, I'll show you. Here's a blank empty pages, right? So you know that this is from today. Hopefully I didn't write the date because I don't, yeah, I did, but, um, I anyway but look the verse um, the verse right here if you can read my writing it's look Psalm 131 come to the quiet I sang it on my YouTube channel so you can look it up but it says it's a Psalm of David and it says oh Lord my heart is not proud nor my mind lofty it's not looking down on people right this is the Psalm so that we become the Psalm neither do I exercise myself in great matters and things too high for me you know and then I wrote down like I surrender all my questions up to you about the mysteries I trust you to show up but anyway I trust myself to you but it says surely that I have behaved in quiet of myself as a child that is weaned of his mother my soul is ever as a weaned child let Israel hope in the Lord from from this time forth and forevermore And the word Lord is the I am that I am. So this is Psalm 131. If you want to memorize this yourself. A weaned child is someone that has been nursed by his or her mother for years and is content to just hold the hand of the mother and walk beside and trust her because she was there. All every, it's like, I know, cause I nursed my kids for about two years or so. And it was like, uh, every every three hours you're there nursing your child showing up to hold them and nurse them and change them and and now they know with with science that when you lay the baby on your skin to skin right then 
your body starts developing whatever antibodies your baby needs. If your baby gets sick with something because you know they're so little and they're being exposed to everything, then your body produces that and gives it to them through the nursing milk, right? And so it's just like, if you think of that, it's how God is with us. Just draw near to God. It says, and he will draw near to you. And so if we draw near, he is Jehovah Rapha. That means God, my healer, the I am that I am, that is my healer in Hebrew. We just studied that name of God. So that's for all of us. I go to these studies for all of us, not just for me. All right, so look at this. Look at what we just read. Her spouse with a couple S relieves her of all this. She confides all to him and then rests on his breast in peace and security. I didn't know why I was led to that verse this morning to meditate on. And, and God was showing it in my mind on my drive here that I would be, I don't know if I'm singing it to you guys, but you can look it up because it's a John Michael Tablet song, but I sing it on YouTube so you can look up that as like, like a child at rest on its mother's knees, I have stilled my soul completely. My heart is not proud, nor are my eyes fixed on things around me. In the quiet, I've stilled my soul within thee, within God. And this is a choice. This is a choice to get... Now, I know if we've been traumatized in our childhood, then we get triggered and stuff. But it's a choice to consciously let go of all this noise that's happening around us, right? And just be present. Look, I close one and then there's another one over there. That's how this life is. So you, you, it's like, wait, God has taken us through all these years and you're still here today. You woke up today. I saw a little bit. Anyway, I won't say what I saw. <laughs> oh, he's got the air blower right behind me. Okay, so anyway, it says, and then rest on his breast in peace and security. The divine action inspires her with measures so just that they who sought to surprise her are themselves surprised. <laughs> Have you ever seen this with your enemies? She benefits by all their efforts and rises by the very means with which they sought to abase her. All contradictions turn to her good. And by leaving her enemies to work their will, she draws so great and continual profit from them that all she need fear is that she may interfere in a work in which God wills to be the chief actor. Yes. Thank you, God. God is the chief actor. It's reminding me of so much how Bruce Lee learned to fight. I gave the book that I had about him to my neighbor. Because <laughs> anyway, hi, if you're watching this, she knows. I was getting rid of every book that wasn't like Christian, you know, but it, um, I was really glad that she got it because he talks about you know, you use the energy. He understood this. This is a truth that God created. It's just like gravity is a truth. And he studied it and studied it and trained in it. But when they're coming at you and you move and you get out of the way, um, it's like then they will fall by their own efforts. I don't know if that's a seal out there. There's something out in the water. Um, I mean, not a seal, dolphins. Anyway. Anyway, so um, I've got other videos with those on. Um, so she benefits by all their efforts and rises by the very means with which they sought to abase her. All contradictions turn to her good. And by leaving her enemies to work their will, she draws so great and continual profit from them that all she need fear is that she may interfere in a work in which God wills to be the chief actor using her enemies as his instruments and in which the soul has no other part than to peacefully watch the working of the divine will and follow its guidance with simplicity. It's such good advice for us right now. Watch, the enemies will fall. There's a verse in the psalm that says that they'll fall on their own sword.
I knew a man that did Bible codes. He would look them up in Hebrew and, and Elliot's name was in that in that psalm. And he anyway, I won't say how he died, but it was sad. And and it could have been enemies doing it to him. But um anyway, it's still an open case. It wasn't ruled as I won't say the words because I don't want to I don't want to flag this at all. And plus we're just in this place. Let's not God rest his soul. Anyway, I was friends with this guy. Oh, um, yeah, this guy, Elliot Smith. And one of my children just saw the movie that he had all this music in last night. He had never seen it. So, and I didn't even tell my kids at the very end. That's, that's my friend singing. There's five songs in that movie. Anyway, the supernatural prudence of the divine spirit the principle of these attractions unerringly seizes the end and intimate relations of each event and all unknown to the soul so disposes them for her spiritual welfare that all which opposes itself thereto must inevitably be destroyed all right and so the verse for this is romans eight twenty eight. it says god works all for good for those who are called for the called it said the called i looked it up last night according to his purposes we're called so he's playing a chessboard like a thousand chessboards higher than us so just keep asking him what do you want me to do and keep surrendering every situation up to god every every dark night of the soul we go through look at i mean i listen i listen to the unabridged audio and i read the lord of the rings over and over and over again because it keeps showing how things unfolded in that and it looked like it was going to go one way and it started going a different way and how Tolkien was just inspired. He was Catholic. He went to mass every day. That means he took communion. He, he ingested the body and blood of Christ every day. And so there's some, there's a grace in that. All, I mean, also God made him brilliant and stuff like this. And whoever knows what else goes into making someone brilliant and their soul and, um, you know, if you watch the movie then of, about Tolkien, and I don't know how accurate it was, but, you know, his friends were in a writing club with him and they passed along. They passed, they, they passed away in the war that they were in together. And so it's like he carried the mantle of like three other friends in the writing group because he said he would carry it on. And it's like he did the work of like four people. Sometimes I think it's, it's like because he had that that intensity from going through that right no one wishes him to go through this horrible he was already an orphan and then he had to watch his best friends but he got to be best friends with Tolk with c.s lewis and brought c.s lewis back to christianity from being an atheist and anyway but in the lord of the rings all of the characters are going through a dark night of the soul and they have this one mission you know, to, to, to destroy the ring so that the enemy cannot use it. And it's like our egotism's dying and take it to Mordor. You know, you find that out in the beginning. So hopefully this isn't a spoiler, but anyway, and so you see every character, it looks like, you know, and so this is our, this is, just like Bob Marley knew about love and about spreading love and peace that's how God operates. God is love. And just how Bruce Lee knew about how when your enemies come at you, if you keep trying to push back, you drain your own, your own energy or whatever. I'm not talking about energies, you know, but it, it like Jesus said, I felt my virtue go out of me. The power, the word is dunamis. When the woman who had the issue of blood touched him and was healed because she believed she'd be healed if she just tried to touched him and he said who touched me and there was a crowd of people his disciples were like what are you talking about who touched you he's like i felt the dunamis in greek the power go out of me and so it's the same word in second timothy 1 7 where it says for god did not give us a spirit of fear but of power dunamis the same healing power of power and love and a sound mind and a sound mind is what we're doing right now it's a mind able to be sober able to calm yourself down able to psalm 131 yourself right with god's help like a weaned child like a child at rest on its mother's knees 
I can look at the world and be at peace, totally surrendered to God because you plus God is a majority and that's all we need. That is all we need. You know, of course we can have loving relationships and I recommend reciprocal ones. If you're going to be dating someone, then understand about secure attachments. You don't have to uh, date an avoidant person um, that doesn't want to do the work to not be avoidant anymore because they depreciate the person that they're with and they turn on if that person was just slightly anxious before they turn on an anxious attachment in the other person from they're just playing out childhood uh wounds childhood attachments this is just one way to describe it all these people even though they're not christians have studied these things just like you could study math you could study chemistry and you are saying truths c.s lewis says this in the book mere christianity that um i need to get this my phone is getting hot that um He says, if you're a Christian, you don't have to say that every other religion is wrong. They're just wrong in, they're just, um, they have the sum right in a lot of ways. They're just um, in the parts where Christianity is different from them, then you're, you're thinking that Christianity is, is correct, right? And not just, but even if you understood, if you understood, if everyone understood the depth and mysticism within what um, St. John is saying, let's say in the, in the book of John, and what's being conveyed here, then it's not, it's not about egotism. It's not about I'm right and you're wrong and I'm going to get a spiritual high by, it's not any of that stuff. But you know, if you've been on my channel, I've been teaching these videos for almost five years now, you guys, women and men, five years. So there's over 1400 videos now you can watch. And I'm always um, trying to bring this to us, doing my best to bring this to us in a graceful way, in a way that's in including people but not cutting out the truth Anyway, I just, it's weird in the movie last night that I was watching, um, that my friend Elliot's songs were in. They said in the movie, October 21st, blah, 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 1975, I think they were saying something. They, I don't know why they were referencing it, but I was like, I looked up at it and I was like, because he died on October 21st. And it's just weird that that's the one date that's mentioned. I think they said 19. I don't remember what the reference was, but I remember like, anyway, the soul who abandons herself to God, okay, has no need to justify herself by words or actions. The divine action justifies her. Like a uh, vindication is of the Lord. There's a verse that says that. The broad, solid, firm rock upon which the faithful soul stands, sheltered from tides and storms look i'll show you the ocean again the tides and storms you can see the boat it's a now i can see it's a boat out there oh i've done this before i forgot i can do this this is called experience okay i, I can lower this and um um, let me see if I can just do it without lowering it. And we get the ocean. And then I can block the people if I see them coming. Here we go. Good, I want you guys to have the ocean. Um, sorry, you get part of that sign. I knew not to park part of the sign. All right. Okay, and now we'll at least get some blue. Oh, you kind of see my car. <laughs> Maybe we'll do it higher. There we go. Okay, so, um, me... oops. Let's see if I get more light from opening up the top. Maybe not. All right. Um,
the broad okay so i just read that so this is chapter vii um seven <laughs> like that's how my math is sometimes um all right well whatever i don't like that anyway the sign <laughs> um but now i have to like okay all right uh, the broad, solid, firm rock upon which the faithful soul stands, sheltered from tides and storms, is the order of the divine will, which is ever present with us, veiled under crosses or the most ordinary duties. So that's a kind of cross that we face, or ordinary duties, like I was talking about nursing. Oh, wait, there's a child. I think that this is far enough away so you can't recognize anybody, but I just want to be mindful. Um, behind these shadows is hidden God's hand which sustains and upholds those who abandon themselves to him so you're not going to you're not going to get this unless you abandon yourself to God you're not going to it's like if you've seen any of my, my other videos when I'm talking about love and expansiveness or the sun shining on us or whatever we see all these words that are about joy and peace and all the verses that I have behind my desk start showing up because you're in that frequency. It's true. This is not something that's made up. This is a true thing. And so, um, oh, I have this, I forgot. I was like, why does it not go? I have it automatic do this. Um, Okay. So, um, I'll just leave it. Leave it be, right? Remember, did you ever see that movie with the with everyone who forgot about the Beatles? I loved that movie. They forgot about the Beatles, and his parent, except for one guy, remembered them, and he was singing the songs. And, and they're they're like, "What? Play that one song? What's it called? Leave it be." <laughs> He's like, "Let it be, mom." <laughs> what Mary says um, let it be unto me it's the first part of the Magnifica or part of anyway let it be unto me according to thy will that's what this is fiat the absolute surrender to divine love all right so behind these shadows is hidden God's hand which sustains and upholds those who abandon themselves to him the moment the soul is firmly established in this perfect self-abandonment, she is henceforth safe from the contradiction of tongues, for she ceases to have anything to do or say in her own defense. You're just not oper operating on that frequency. You don't need to do that. In fact, what I've been seeing too is you get pulled down into that and you lower, you lower If God is operating way up here, you're lowering yours to this lower level and you bring in warfare that, that's just not needed if you want to understand it that way. Anyway, since the work is God's from no other source, must its justification be sought. Its consequences and effects will sufficiently justify it. We have but to leave it to its own development. DS... DC Eractat verbum. He doesn't say what that is. Die. It's in um dies. Oh sorry. Dies. D I E S. Dies D C. It's I'm saying something in Latin and sometimes they, they say it for us, but verbum I think is like speaking. Anyway. When we are no longer guided, I always say, if you know Latin, then write that down for us. And someone will finally do this in, in the comments, in this sentence. All right. Thank you. Um, so we know. Or someone else, if you're watching this, you can look it up. I, I have the app so you can keep listening to it and leave the app. I don't usually watch these over unless God has me listen to one because he wants to teach me this all over again. Otherwise, I would do it. Um, 
When we are no longer guided by our own ideas, we need not defend ourselves by words. Oh, verbum, yeah, see, that was words. <laughs> our words can only represent, represent our ideas. And where an absence of ideas is admitted, no words are needed. So because you're not ruminating on it. Jesus said that. What can you add by worrying about any of these things? God knows you have need of them. Do not worry. And then right before he left, you know, before he came back as the resurrection, he says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not, do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. I think it's John 14, 27. I might have mentioned it a couple of videos ago and I said 10, 27, but 10, 27 is something else in John. It's 14, 27. Anyway, of what avail are they, these words, these, these arguments, right? To give a reason for what we do, but we know not this reason. It is hidden in the principle which animates our actions and which impresses us only in a most ineffable manner. Right? We must therefore leave to the results of our actions the task of justifying their principle. All is meetly sustained in this divine procession. Everything therein has a for, a firm and solid basis. And the reason for that which proceeds is manifest in the result which follows. It is no longer a life of thought, imagination, multiplied words, these no longer occupy, nourish. Hold on. I can move this back. Oh, I forgot. I can't. This is so awesome. Oh, shoot. That's a silly sign. It's blocked by one of my camera things, but it's not blocked for you. But anyway. God knew that it would bug me because when I parked by it, the other spot was, it was free. But anyway, whatever. We'll just deal. I don't, I don't want people like, anyway, okay. I don't like anything that promotes being afraid, right? That's, that, oh, cool. Good, so we have just this. Like, you know, God will take care of you. Oh, okay. Okay. only in a most ineffable manner, right? We must therefore leave to, the re leave to the results of our actions the task of justifying their principle. All is meetly sustained in this divine procession. Everything therein has a firm and solid basis and the reason for that which precedes it is manifest in the result which follows. Like we'll see how God takes care of this anyway. It is no longer a life of thought, imagination, multiplied words these no longer occupy nourish or sustain the soul right think of a little child that just got nursed it's not thinking of all these schematics and plans for how to rule the world it's just content being present right she no longer knows where she walks or where her path may lie in the future because <laughs> this is a new moment right now is a new moment to incite herself with reflections to bear the toils and fatigues of the route, her strength lies in an intimate conviction of her own weakness. A way is open to her feet. She enters and walks unhesitatingly therein with pure, straightforward, simple faith. She follows the straight path of the commandments, leaning upon God himself, whom she finds at every turn of the way, and this God, the sole object of her life, will take her justification upon himself and so manifest his presence that she will be avenged of her detractors. So she'll be avenged of her detractors. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. It really does. It makes you feel sad for how it's going to come upon those who have come against you. You know, because there's a verse that says, touch not my anointed, do my prophet no harm. And I will bless those who bless you. And, you know, it's something like curse those who curse you. Not that you wish curses upon anybody, but hopefully everyone will turn that they'll come to repentance. 
chapter 8, V-I-I-I. -I -I. Um, God gives life to the soul abandoned to him by means which apparently lead only to death. I'm sure this is going to be like spiritual death, right? There is a time when God wills to be the life of the soul and work out, uh, not spiritual death, but like, you know, where the dark night of the soul is the death of the egotism. It's ego death. I was trying to explain this to a musician that let me said I could use his song. He's like, as long as you're not singing about funeral stuff, I'm like, no, it's ego death. It's a really good song. I won't say who, because, but thank, I thank them because they said I could use their song. Anyway, it's a, it was a famous 80s band. I'll just leave it at that. But anyway, um, if any other 80s band or people connected to 80s band singers are watching this, that wouldn't give me permission to use your songs, let me know because I sometimes hesitate in my teaching because I don't know, I don't want to take someone else's proprietary work, even though I'm just teaching what God is showing me through that. But they did the hard work of being surrendered to, to have that song. Anyway, so delicate balance. I always give them credit, of course. Um, and it promotes their song in a different way. It's, I, I think it's a win-win, but um, anyway, there's a time when God wills to be the life of the soul and work out her perfection himself in a hidden and secret manner. Then all her own ideas, lights, efforts, researches, reasonings become a source of illusion. And when, and that's like in the, in the song Greece, this is a life of illusion. Anyway, um, and I, when I taught Greece, it was talking about the anointing that we have, like the oil of anointing. That's Greece. The word Christos is, means this oil of anointing, Christ. Anyway, and when the soul, after many sad experiences, is finally taught the uselessness of her self-activity, she finds that God has hidden and obstructed all other channels of life that she may live in him alone. So all these things are stripped away from you if you read the poem the hound of heaven then it says all of this um then convinced of her nothingness and that her oh so cute her self activity there's a little child so let's see which way they go they're going that way okay um then convinced of her nothingness and that her her self activity is prejudicial to her she abandons herself completely to to God and relies only upon him. God then becomes a source of life to the soul, not by means of thoughts, revelations, reflections. These are now become a source of illusion, but effectively by the reality of his grace hidden under the strangest appearances, right? It's just like, I think I'll turn this around again. Even though I love the blue of the ocean behind us. There's kids and stuff coming, so. I don't know why I'm doing what I'm doing all the time, right? God just revealed it to me after five years of doing this. Someone said the verse, God didn't say just go and proselytize people. He said, go and make disciples. And that's teaching them. And I'm like, oh, you've been having me make disciples of Christ this whole time. I didn't even know that's what, what was happening but anyway I'm only sharing this so that you can see these things in your own life like you see them five years later you just have to be well choose to be or not obedience all this time going what is going on what are you having me do because you know so many people will come against you and make fun of you and try to get you to stop try to get you di diverted in a different direction try to make fun of you like I already said that anyway and so just we walk by faith not by sight not by these eyes the real eyes, our spiritual eyes, the heart emoji eyes, I say sometimes. Just keep walking in love. Oh, I didn't wear my heart necklace, but because I was work, working out with my friend. All right, and so, um, excuse me for a moment, I had some water. God then becomes a source of life for the soul.
but effectively by the reality of his grace hidden under the strangest appearances, the divine operations being invisible to the soul, she receives its virtue, its substance under circumstances, which she feels will prove her ruin. I don't know if you saw even the last, hi, the last video I, I was talking about, I was like, well, if I end up living in this car, like it's, it's paid off and you know, it's, um, whatever. Oh, I love seeing people on wheelchairs. Usually I'm skating by them on the boardwalk and we just have this, this knowing that we're just, we're both on wheels. I don't know. I, I might have said that before. Anyway, so it's substance under circumstances, which she feels will prove her ruin, right? What? Let go of that guy that's trying to date me? Like what? That, that doesn't, that doesn't seem wise. And it's just like, nope let him go let him go let, uh, so many <laughs> like, and i have no problem i mean because god has helped but i'm not i'm just using this as an example for you it's like be detached and not avoidant you you're full of love and present but but you know just god what is your will what is your will help me keep following your will <sighs> thank you for this day thank you for this expansive ocean wow It's just like, look, it's big enough. Um, it's big enough, you know, to hold our problems just like God is. I love looking out at it. It, it reveals that quality of God. God is so much more than this. God created this. But it, it's kind of like the expanse of the sky holds this expansiveness of what God is. It shows a characteristic of how God is. That sometimes we, you know, it's nice to have it in our vision when, when everything else is such an illusion. But anyway, um, she receives this virtue. It's substance under circumstances which she feels will prove her ruin. There is no remedy. The she, she's... Um, Jean-Pierre de Cassade is talking about she as the soul, like a boat is called a she sometimes, or a nation, or, you know. She is liberty, she comes to rescue me. Sometimes the Holy Spirit is, is conveyed as a woman. Um, and, and, and God is even in the Old Testament sometimes, it's the El Shaddai. I think it's El Shaddai, the God of of the nurturing, the mother's nurturing, the God of the breast is one name of that. Um, but I don't, I don't want to get anything. Anyway, so there's no remedy for this obscurity. We must remain buried therein for here in this night of faith, God gives himself to us and with himself all things, right? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, this right way of loving, this high calling of loving of right wayness it's just true white wayness it makes you more loving to everybody and then all these other things will be added to as well they'll be added to you um and so god gives himself to us and with himself all things henceforth the soul is but a blind subject if you want to i don't want to keep interrupting but if you want to watch i just did a live so look in my lives after this gets posted it's the, my most recent live and I was inspired um, the other day to do the song by Dirk Spintley called I'm a Riser. I'm a riser, I'm a give up, get up off the ground, don't run and hide her. Anyway, it's like Jesus rises us. We have the Holy Spirit that rose him from the dead in, it, in us, but um, oh yeah, so there's a lyric that said, if I ain't got no money, I can make it. And I was speaking, teaching the song. God was having me teach the song as if God is is speaking the song to us. And we're also speaking the song to God and God working in us. Like I can rise with God's power in me, that dunamis power. But it's like, if we ain't got no money, it's okay. God created the whole world. He can make it for us anytime he wants. He really can. It's so funny. Because when we get worried about money things, it's like God could... God owns all of the banks and all of the money in the whole world. He can make it appear any way God wants. So don't limit God, right? It's, that's the enemy wants you to think that you're going towards your ruin. If you lose everything, but you have God, then you haven't gone to your ruin. You've gone to, to bliss, you know? You've gone to uh, not masochistically making yourself do that. Don't do 
unwise things because you want to be foolish but be fools for christ right he will he'll show us he'll show us exactly how to do that just keep praying for discernment okay henceforth the soul is but a blind subject or rather i was just thinking blindness it's like the blind people some people used to say that people that are blind um that they're just about to be enlightened that was an old theory in, in the east i think but i'm i'm not but i got to meet stevie wonder so i was like anyway i mean he was just right in front of me because he showed up uh singing in this concert that i was at i didn't get to go be formally introduced to him but um henceforth the soul is but a blind subject or rather she may be likened to a sick man man or woman right ignorant of the virtues of his remedies and feeling only their bitterness you know you only get this bitterness of the medicine or like of just everything coming up or whatever but you're getting all of the sickness out of your body you know or your fever burning everything out you feel the bitterness of the the, the the sickness but frequently imagines they must lead to death right it feels like it's going to the exhaustion and crisis which follows them seem to justify his fears nevertheless under this semblance of death he receives health and he continues to accept the remedies at the word of the physician. Now, he's talking in the 1500s about good physicians that are actually more yielded to God. And so I highly, highly recommend you really use discernment and pray before there. I know there are very good doctors because I've had to interact with them with someone in our family that had a grave illness. God made me interact with all these people that I was so distrustful of, but I just had to like keep trusting God in each step. Doesn't mean trust everything, but keep praying over each step. <sighs> this, but I still had a thousand people praying for this person, like over a thousand people, I'm sure. All over the world were praying. It was a child, so. Uh, and I won't say more. Thus, souls abandoned to God's will take no heed of their infirmities except those of a nature sufficiently evident and grave to require care and treatment wow i keep asking god about a certain thing so this is answering i hope it's answering for you i trust that it is or else he wouldn't have me putting this out in public i'd just be reading this out loud to myself right this is for you because god wanted it to come into your life god thank you for the love that you have for each person that's here today thank you i pray in jesus name we praise you. God inhabits the praises of his people. Psalm 22, 3. Um, the languor and impotence of faithful souls are but illusions and semblances which they must courageously face. So we look impotent and stupid to this world. Stupid is stooping your power, stooping your id. We, we look quite dumb to this world and that's why they make fun of us. And so... We just let it be, let it be. And so we look like, uh, you know, I've had people speak really, like people in authority, authority in the church speak word curses over me that I've had to take to God, for God to just burn them off of me, you know, because um, he wouldn't have me take that in and absorb that. You're not meant to take those in and absorb that. Um, just Jesus said on the cross, Father, forgive them. They know not what they're doing. Just forgive them bless those who persecute you because it helped me so it can help you move lean in further to God and go God what's your definition of me because it can't be this it can't be what this person's saying they're being a bully in the name of God and it's misusing the name of God unfortunately and just look at the times we've done that you know when we got triggered by someone else so just never ever we I never want to do that again but help us God to be full of grace and mercy and forgiveness and we pray repentance to anyone that has done that to any child of God to and and all of us are children of God on the one sense wow I didn't know that was going to come today but the languor and impotence of faithful souls are but illusions so it looks like we're lazy as well people are like why aren't you getting a nine to five job like this so, you know I'm like I'm working like 12 hours a day I don't know what you're talking about like I work night and day. I'm like, God, speak to me while I'm sleeping. So I have these words to say the next day. Like, I want to work 24 hours a day for God. I, and 
and his yoke is easy his burden is light because it, you, you're walking into your higher purpose your psalm 139 read it there's a book about your your life and god knows every page of that and you want to walk out those pages god we pray help us walk out these pages God sends and permits them to exercise their faith and self-abandonment. And in these virtues lies the soul's true remedy. It remedies your soul. It heals you from the poison of this world, from the entanglement that you got so tied into that you thought your egotism and your worth was. Like, it's like, it's like thinking that you're this Barbie doll character, or whatever, a avatar, and you're not. You're this real soul essence that God has huge soul purpose for for you to act out on and walk in in this world um she must go on generously utterly ignoring her infirmities accepting all that comes to her to do or suffer in the order of god never hesitating to treat her body as we do those beasts of burden only destined to spend their lives going hither and thither at our will right this is why i've started doing this way in wednesdays i'm like not looking forward to uploading that but i just keep trusting god it's like no your body is a living a temple of the whole of the of the holy spirit you're you're like there's a fire going on right now where i am in southern california and i was just reflecting on the way here what if those firemen and women i think there's fire women too weren't trained up and like buff and like ready to go fight this fire like people's lives are in danger will you as a christian we don't have to be all as buff as as some people right but but have some respect for your body because god put your soul in this body and he gave you this body as a gift and so choose to stop dissipating i encourage you don't dissipate your life on overeating or overindulging in anything in caffeine in any anything in um, tobacco in anything all right anything not anything you know what i'm talking about your eyes too and and watching too much tv even or even good stuff right um anyway so it says never hesitating to treat her body as we do these beasts of burden only destined to spend their lives going hither and thither at our will this treatment is more efficacious than all that delicate care which only weakens the vigor of the mind right run when you can run if you're able to right um but you're you're way more able than you think you are anyway um this strength of purpose has an indescribable virtue and power to sustain a feeble body and a year of this noble and generous life is worth a century of selfish fears and cares and care you know uh, i i was convicted about something like blessed theophylact from the 1100s writes about how oh all these men in greece in in these places they go to these bath houses and get mas massages and stuff and, and women too i guess i don't know and they think they're taught that this is for their health. Now I know a very excellent massage therapist and she does this lymph node drainage massage. And so like, I know that was benefiting my body, um, especially if you've had trauma and so you, you always left your body and you've had bad things happen to your body or whatever in whatever way, like, or neglect. And so you're nervous. And so there's a, there's a time and a place for everything. But just ask God because sometimes we keep thinking, oh, I have to go keep pampering myself. And it just weakens us and makes us have more excuses and we become more and more feeble. So you have to ask God, surrender to God. We must endeavor to habitually maintain an air of childlike gentleness and goodwill, right? Uh, what can we fear from this divine fortune? Guided, sustained, and protected by the providence of God, a capital P. The whole exterior conduct of his children should be nothing less than heroic, all right? I have all of these videos about your epic journey, your heroic journey. Look up like hashtag hero. You know, I did a teaching once. I don't know if it's still public. On, I could be your hero, baby. And the also, I'm holding out for a hero till the end of the night. And he's got to be strong. And that's us. And he's got to be good. And he's got to be fresh for the fight, right? Um... Bonnie Tyler, I think, sings that. And the other one was Enrique Iglesias, I think. Like, these songs come to me, like, when I'm on vacation or when I'm at a, uh, just, you know, a pharmacy or something, picking up, um, you know, I don't know, sometimes diapers for my kids back then, you know. 
I just the Holy Spirit highlights songs for me and, and it's just highlighting these themes that we're meant to be walking on that people are not awake to we're meant to wake up the alarming objects which oppose their progress are not in themselves they are only sent to embellish their lives by still more glorious actions they entangle them in embarrassments of every kind whence human prudence can see no issue and feeling its weakness stop short confounded then does the divine fortune gloriously manifest what it is what it is for souls who wholly trust therein it extricates them more marvelously than the writers of fictions with unrestrained imagination in the leisure and privacy of their study unraveled the intrigues and perils of their Im imaginary heroes bringing them invariably to a happy end all right i trust in that i trust in the happy in the very the end that is happy happily ever after with divine love with god like who cares at the end if you kept surrendering to god then god will say my good and faithful servant and that's all that matters right even if it looks completely idiotic like the back side of a quilt they say you know and then finally god turns it over and you're 99 and you're like see this glorious quilt that looks like a van gogh painting and you're like oh i just was back there doing all the stitching this whole time people making fun of me for like you know i'll have something that gets like a thousand likes or something let's say on 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 one platform and then like three likes somewhere else and it's not pushed out and it's just like you gotta just keep going you gotta keep going that's just one way it manifests for me in my life and just like all right just don't look with your outer eyes people will make fun and whatever more admirably still, does it guide them safely through the perils of death, the snares of demons, the terrors of temptation, the fears of hell. It elevates these souls to heaven. And they are the, it got cut off, I think it says real, subject of those mystic histories, more beautiful and curious than any ever invented by the crude imagination of man. Then onward, my soul, through perils and fears, guided, directed, and sustained by the invisible, all-powerful, unerring hand of divine providence, let us go on fearlessly in joy and peace to the end, turning obstacles into victories. Look, I brought, this is the word in Greek, and I'm not trying to, I brought these today for a reason. Nike, I think that's how you pronounce it in Greek. It means victory. God keeps showing me victory, victory, victory. All right in joy and peace to the end turning obstacles into victories remembering that it was to struggle and conquer that we enrolled ourselves under his banner ah his banner over me is love but we roll enroll under there's a word verse the the last name of god and i forgot how to say it Ah, oh, she had us i don't think it's in my journal but it's God of our ban God our banner. Oh, Rehi? I can't remember in Hebrew, but he she had us write it down. It's um they would hold up a banner and the the crucifix, the cross, Jesus on the cross itself was a banner. Um they would hold one that would, would it was the rally point for victory. His banner. Exavit Vincent's it. If the Latin person was already here, then you might as well do this one too if you're with us. All right. Thank you. And every step under his guidance is a victory. The book of souls lies open before the Holy Spirit. And their history is still written. For holy souls will furnish material for its pages to the end of the world. This history is but the relation of God's operations and designs upon man. And it depends upon ourselves whether we shall appear in its pages and continue its narration by uniting our sufferings and actions to his divine will. No, let nothing we have to do or suffer alarm us. It can cause us no loss. It is only sent us that we may furnish material for the holy history, his story. Remember, have you heard that? The holy his story. It's his story, which is increasing day by day. All right, look, we're almost at the end of this hour. So love all in all to the self-abandoned. That's what this says for the next chapter. So I'll fold it down here on chapter nine. Love holds the place of all things to souls who walk in the way of abandonment. 
God, while he despoils a soul who wholly abandons herself to him, gives her something which takes the place of all things, of light, of strength, of life, of wisdom. This gift is his love. Divine love is like a supernatural instinct in these souls. Ah, He kept showing me that I would want my heart necklace because I always lift up my heart necklace, but I just didn't want to run with it. So I was like, I have a heart ring. I have a heart on my on my on my ear on my yeah it's right there anyway i wish you so much love god gives you his divine love so don't fear anything all right we don't have to fear it all right much love share and like and all that